Hello and welcome back to another video. This is a new series, part one of some. Uh, we're going to see how long it runs, but we're setting up a new piece of equipment. We're going to take you through all the way from receiving the piece of equipment, cleaning it, getting it all set up and taking it through. That piece of equipment that you might be wondering what it is, is right behind me, just here. It's a small CNC machine. Small 3020 machine with your standard black box control unit. So we're going to start in this video. We're going to have an overview of the machine, give it a little clean, just get it to a base point where we can figure out what needs to be done to it. I managed to pick this up as a really good deal second hand online. Um, I've been wanting to jump into CNC for a long time now. Um, just never had the um, opportunity to jump in at the low, low price I got this for. The machine itself, I believe, is a 2030 or a 3020, whichever way you want to go round about it. Kind of Chinese-made CNC machine, commonly available online from places like eBay and AliExpress and things like that. A very common kind of set of machines um, that people often opt for as beginning first machines, and that's what this is for me comes supplied with a um, a spindle which is okay a, um, it's a DC motor attached to a E11 collet I believe um, has stepper motors and the thing that I like about these particular machines from the look of them is you can buy there's lots out there the smaller kind of 3018 machines you can buy become a little bit more uh, flimsy and not quite as rigid and solid as construction of these. You can see here we've got a quite nice aluminium gantry that's going to run forward and backwards here um, along a nice slotted bed for holding down things and then we have a mini CNC engraving machines but apparently there's more than one machine here who knew um, and it is a TD three-axis controller so this is the control box that controls the motors and also drives power to the spindle um, it came second hand from someone who had bought it, got it up and running, but then they needed a bigger machine. Um, however, they hadn't used it for many years, as can be seen by the amount of um, dust and crud kind of kicking around in all the nooks and grannies. That's why cleaning it is going to be up part one. Came with this box here, which has got, well, we'll have a look at that in a minute. We'll do an inventory of what we've got to, at hand. Uh, the box, of course, and a USB drive. That's got the um, software on it, however, there's a problem with that, we'll get to that in a little bit. I'm going to tear this down, have a look what's inside, have a look at the components that we're playing with. Um, on the back of the control box, if we turn this round, we can see here we've got these pin-out controls that just lock in place. Um, a, a mysterious extra pin-out that doesn't seem to be labelled, um, which from a little bit of research appears to be possibly the probe pin, um, obviously our um, kettle lead, uh, a USB input and also, not that you can really see it on the video very well, but an old style parallel port. Not seen one of them in years. Don't have anything with a parallel port. So it's going to be interesting to see how we can drive this. So we're on to the contents of this box. It came with the machine. Um, I'm going to have a little inventory through, sort out. And I'll let you know what goodies we've got inside. Turns out we had quite a bounty of useful little bits in this box. Everything unpacked and sorted out. So let's have a look at what we've got. So, there's a series of ER11 collets. Um, not quite sure why we've got these. We've got a collet already on the machine. Not sure if it's one of these or not. There was one loose one hanging around, which for now I've put in one of the boxes. And the USB data stick that had the software and the information on for running the machine, which is now outdated, um, mostly for using that serial port, which I don't think I'm going to be using. Might have to come up with a clever solution to circumnavigate that. Uh, a small brush, cleaning things. Another piece of equipment. Uh, this looks like it is for one of those um, pin-out connections on the back of the machine. has a positive and a negative clip. I believe this to be a probing device. So you can attach this to your piece of, piece of um, equipment that you're machining 
and the, the drill bit and then it will come down and it will automatically sense its Z height. So we'll have a play with that, we'll see if we can get that working. Hold down um, parts, fairly common, spanners, um, a little collection of bits in there, they look like they're um, hold down pieces, some blocks of um, just plain aluminium perhaps for use with this probe maybe, I don't know, don't quite know, we'll have a look into that later on. A whole series of bits and a fuse and things like that. A series of bits, I have no idea what half of these bits are, but we're going to find out as we go along. That's, that's, that's the whole point of this series. Um, I'm sure by googling numbers and looking up various different things I would get half a clue as to what half of these things are. But for now we're just going to say yay we've got free things. It looks like anything that's in this box is possibly used. There's possibly one of these here, which looks like it's got a, a rather burnt end that could have been used as well. So that's that. We've uh, gone through, sorted out that box. We know what we've got to hand. So the next step is just having a bit of a general clean up. Just cleaning up all the dust and stuff that I can easily get to. Cleaning off these rails a little bit. Just trying to get it into a nice sort of back to factory basics clean. So let's do that. Turns out it wasn't quite as bad as I thought it was going to be. It wasn't that dirty. I checked underneath and checked all the guide rails. Um, next I sort of had a look at the spindle to see if I could find an identifier for it, but I couldn't. And with that all a little bit cleaned up, I took the uh, spindle out just to see if there are any identifiers on here, because I'm not quite sure what the power of this spindle is. Um, I might be able to figure it out from the measurements, perhaps. We'll have a look at that at a later date during kind of the calibration phase and while I think about it we'll uh, get this plug back in as well so that's the pop running the power there through here we can take our focus from this now and have a look inside our control unit and see what comes along there so to take the control unit apart to take the shielding off first we're going to make sure that we're definitely disconnected from the mains electricity which I can see we are because no one wants to electrocute themselves. Um, not today, at least. Uh, I've cracked a nail, that's always fun. But we're going to move forward. Uh, there's a lot of screws to take out, so I'm just going to time lapse this while we do that. There were so many screws, they just kept coming, coming, and coming. Right then, so there we go. Finally, after removing all the screws front, back, left, and right that I could see, the, the lid wouldn't lift off. You saw me get a little bit frustrated. And then I found out there were four more screws in the back. A total of what? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 screws holding that on. Makes it nice and safe so that people aren't digging around in there if they shouldn't be. Um, but I don't know if 12 will be going back in. We'll see. Depends how often I think we're going to need to open and close this unit. So let's have a look inside. A lid lift off. We can see we have a, a power switch here, which is powered into this board here. This appears to be the main power board for the unit, taking power from our mains in across to our toroidal transformer that is then stepping it up and down accordingly and feeding in here at, let's have a look. It looks like we've got a feed in at 36 and a feed in at 16 volts, it would appear. Um, that is then passing through this unit, which is passing through to the spindle through this pin out. Um, so this potentiometer here, wired into this board here, follows the power through, commands the power out for the spindle. Um, here we have coming across the power from this board to this board. This is a 24 volt feed, and this here appears to be, if it was all plugged in, I've been messing around earlier, but um, this all appears to be the brains of the machine for the X, Y, and Z controls. So these pins here, these are four pins going in, um, are the X, Y, and Z, one for each of our motors on our machines. Um, there is also a pinout for a probe, which has been wired into this pinout connector, which is the uh, mysterious one that I was talking about earlier on the back. We have a small fan being driven to keep the unit under temperature. Um, 
basic power switch spindle switch at the front that is then controlled at the moment by a potentiometer I'm hoping that we will be able to get some sort of um, power wave management system to drive it from the software but that's a future video um, and then the brains of the board we have got a you can see here a JP382C um, I've had a little look at this board a little play with it and it's a common thing with these machines um, that they come with a essentially a pirated um, a copy a clone whatever you want to call it um, version of a planet CNC board now this will only really work with a couple of pieces of software which are um, present on that USB drive but are, have been swiftly deleted as they are pirated versions of the software but also they are demonstration versions so they can only run a small part like the first three or four lines of a piece of code um, before they um, poop out however it only runs through the serial port for use with Mac 3 and it will be driven it can be driven by um, Planet CNC's um, software through the USB however this is it's just a bit janky it's not a very particularly enjoyable way to have this controlled so I've been looking around I could buy the parts um, to replace this with official Planet CNC parts or it seems that there are other options out there on forums and videos that other people have made which inspired me to make this video um, of turning this into a more open source uh, piece of equipment using gerbil which is commonly used for 3D printers and things like that but also for um, smaller CNC's and um, hobbyist open source CNC's like this one. So we're essentially going to be ripping the brains out of the machine replacing the brains with something new. So the first step is finding what I need for that. The second step is ripping all this out and the uh, final step will be having a perfectly working CNC machine. That is the aim, that is the hope. We won't need to replace the power board. The power board is, is fine, that is doing its job. Um, the only thing I'd like to try and get away from would be having the manually set um, switch knob. Uh, no, it's a Potentiometer, that's the one. Anyway, um, getting away from the potentiometer, because this, when I was playing with it earlier, you seem to, well, let's fire it up and have a look. That's a good way of doing this. We'll take the power cable, we'll ram it in the back here again. We'll make sure our power is on. Click, there we go. And then we can bring our spindle back across, so we can manually jog the spindle by hand. We can see the spindle here. Um, and then we can turn this on. So, keeping fingers well clear, children. Electric things, do not fix, stick, stick fingers or me metal things in. Keep yourself safe. Uh, so, with that on, that is now powering up the board. We cannot control the X and Y, we can't move this around manually. However, I can turn the spindle on, and then very gently start to bring the spindle up, and eventually, you'll hear a buzzing. And now this is running. We can see here this is running. However, we go quite quick, but you don't get any idea of how fast we're going. I can go all the way on, I can go halfway on, but it's kind of a guesswork game. Okay for starting off, that fan's also quite noisy, but it works. And this is how I know that this seems to do nothing. It seems to be wired into that board, a little bit confused as to why it's not stopping that. Maybe once we replace the brains, we'll fix the problem. Who knows? Anyway, power off on everything. And uh, yeah, that's the inside of the machine. That's it for a quick tear down. Uh, I now have a little filming jig for filming the top down elements for the other parts of the videos we're going to be looking at. We have it prepared and tore down. Tore down? Teared down? Taken apart? In pieces. Ready to have its brains ripped out. New brains fitted in. We'll Frankenstein it together and get it to work. I've already received some parts over in this direction. Whee! Um, so we'll go through those at the start of the next video. 
and we're going to have a look at the parts we're going to be putting in. We've got new brains, new parts, new cables for upgrades galore. The rest of the workshop is looking a little bit untidy, a little bit of a mess, but that is the nature of making. We cannot wait for the perfect circumstance. We must make, we must create, no matter what. Don't give up, folks. Have a good one. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye. This is Artisan Binks, signing out.